Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today, I got a very special dare to compare for you. Not too long ago, I asked the question if anyone would want me to try to compare the 1995 Ninja Megazord from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie to the 2017 Megazord from Saban's Power Rangers. Well, I'm surprised that really I only got one response out of that, and that was from my friend and subscriber, Max Power. And he said, do it. And I never got anyone saying otherwise, so I'm going to do it. So, Max, this is for you, buddy. I have hesitated to do this in the past, because to try to compare the 1995 Megazord to the 2017 Megazord, that's like literally comparing apples and oranges in quite a big way. Because what everybody always overlooks is we're talking a serious difference in technology that is separated by 22 years. So it seems kind of unfair to really do this. However, I'll do the best I can with this. Now for the 1995 Megazord, it had its good points. For instance, it's the Ninja Megazord that would appear in Season 3. For the first time ever in Power Rangers history, they used CGI to make this Megazord. And it's got some real awesome aspects to it. For instance, when they're fighting the Ectomorphicon Titans, it's pretty awesome the way they play it out. For instance, you got the Falcon Zord shooting rockets at the Scorpiotron. You got the Frog Zord having the thing by the neck. The Wolf Zord had it by the tail. Meanwhile, you know, you got the Crane Zord trying to confront Ivan Ooze, which didn't work out very well. And the Bear Zord standing up to the Hornetron, but Again, it didn't work out very well. But when they destroy the Scorpiotron, it's awesome. And when they all come together, that was incredible, especially for that time. Because, you know, again, this had never been done for Power Rangers before. Granted, it was a movie, not a TV show, but still, it had never been done. So for many of us, we went nuts when we saw it happen. Because it was incredible watching the transformation take place. However, it is a little short-lived when you see Ivan Ooze become the Hornetron. And when you see the Ninja Megazord as a whole, for instance, his uh, hips look a little weird compared to his live-action counterpart. And, of course, the most notorious thing would have to be his head. It looks like a bucket. That is probably the biggest complaint that we all have about that. Because, I mean, why did they do this? It's still a mystery to me. Why did they decide to make his head look like a bucket? bucket because when you compare that to the ninja megazord from season three it has a face and it looks so much better why they did this who who knows it's beyond my understanding and i always did wonder why they had shogun megazord's sword for that scene but then again the idea is the movie is not necessarily supposed to be canon to the series and one thing that i've always wondered about for the ninja megazord and the zords themselves is why were they so shiny? Well, I got my answer a couple of years back because three guys who did CGI effects for Hollywood actually did a small comparison between the 1995 Megazord and the 2017 Megazord. And what they said was that it's a lot easier to make metal objects shiny because it saves a lot of time in the rendering process. And when you try to render them to look more realistic, you have to add texture upon texture upon texture. Now, I'm not too familiar with CG, how it works as a whole, but I have seen some videos on the subject, and I have tinkered with Blender off and on, with not much success, I might add, but hey, I don't do it for a living, so. Either way, to add texture and to make it look a little bit more realistic, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a very serious budget. And I had no idea that making stuff shiny is a lot easier than adding textures. But that makes perfect sense. Of course, another complaint I did have was how the Bear Zord and the Wolf Zord, their teeth look pretty jagged and, well, kind of cheap by comparison. But again, it's probably due to the fact that they had to cut a few corners. So, can't be helped, I guess. Because, again, Saban did have his hands on this one, even though it was made by Fox. So, yeah, they had to do what they could with what they had. And either way, I still say that they did a pretty awesome job with it. So now we come to the 2017 Megazord. Well, what we get here is not a very good big improvement, to be honest. In fact, by comparison, it's a little bit worse. For instance, the CG on these Zords, it doesn't look any better than what we had back in 95, to be honest. I think some people would say that the 
texture and all that that was added to them might be just a little bit better, but not by much because there's so many things going against this Megazord. For instance, one, we got the fact that, well, they're not exactly true to their original Dinozord counterparts. That's the biggest problem. Because the Tyrannosaurus Zord, it is literally the size of buildings. And in the series, it was a lot bigger than most of the buildings, give or take a skyscraper or two. But, you know, Aside of that, it's got machine guns for arms. Machine guns? Really? And the Triceratops Zord, well, the look is kind of cool. The, I love the blue color, and I love how his horns look like sharp knives. But six legs? Really? Six legs? I heard the idea they were going for was that it was alien technology trying to copy stuff, but without actually doing it. But seriously... And of course, the um, pterodactyl sword is actually pretty good. That one is actually probably the best one of them all, because it looks something like a pterodactyl and flies more like a jet, which makes perfect sense, because that's what the pterodactyl did in the series. And Saber 2 Tiger Zord is okay, except for the fact that it has guns right by the face. And, well, we don't get too much screen time with the Saber 2 Tiger, which really bugs me, because I wanted to see a little bit more with that. Come to think of it, we don't get enough time with the Triceratops either. So, yeah, it's like, okay, why are we not getting enough time with the Zords? The most we're getting is Tyrannosaurus, Pterodactyl, and, oh my god, the Mastodon. The Mastodon. The worst of the worst. Oh my god. Ugh. I don't want to talk about this one because I've talked about it numerous times as to how horrible it is, but it has to be said. That Mastodon is a joke. The worst joke in history. For some reason, they decided to give him six legs and have a straight snout and tusks, and he's real hunched up like that. He looks like a big bug with tusks. That's what he looks like. A bug with tusks. He doesn't look anything like a mastodon. It is truly the worst. And everybody agrees on this. Literally, all the fans, even the non-fans agree on this. Because it is pathetic. It looks absolutely pathetic. Because, I'm sorry. Granted, it's supposed to be alien technology. But they said that it's supposed to copy the most powerful things at the time, which was dinosaurs. And, uh, do they really look truly like dinosaurs? Uh, no, not quite. The Tyrannosaurus is pretty close to make comparisons. Sabertooth Tiger, yeah. Pterodactyl, I would say so. Triceratops has the head right, but the Mastodon doesn't look anything like it. It looks nothing like a Mastodon at all. It is the most disgraceful Zord in existence. It really is. And you know what? Because of how disgraceful this is, and how it looks nothing like a mastodon, instead it looks more like a bug, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call what it should have been called in the first place. I'm going to call it Master Bug from now on, because that's exactly what it is. A Master Bug. Because it looks nothing, I repeat, nothing like a mastodon. Again, bug with tusks. That's what it looks like. So Master Bug. That's what I'm going to call it, because it is not worthy of the name Mastodon, and we all know it. And when they become the Megazord, a lot of people have accused it of looking like Optimus Prime. And, you know, they're partway right. It does look like Optimus Prime. But if you look closely, the shape of it resembles Goldar, or I should say the 2017 version of Goldar. And somebody actually came up with a good theory on this. They said that since they were designed to copy the most powerful thing on Earth, well, at that time, Goldar was the most powerful thing on Earth, so they came together and copied it. And I think the Zeo Crystal might have helped, too. But anyway, yeah, they end up becoming that, and, well, 
we don't get much out of it at all. I mean, the look, it is not true to the original series at all. It looks way too different, and the CG isn't much better. There's quite a few points where it's a little too shiny for its own good, and not to mention, there's things about it that just don't look right at all. Like, for instance, when you see them piloting the Megazord in both the 1995 movie and the series, they are always in the head, and they're always all together. Well, for this one, they are literally separated. Really? How are they supposed to pilot this thing if they're literally separated like that? There is a plus to this, and it's not much. The guys who did the comparison brought this up, and that's the fact that the shots for this is done from a human's perspective. Now, basically what I mean by that is they shoot it from an upward angle, like you're a person just standing right there looking up while the Megazord is fighting Goldar. And that's pretty cool that they did that, because, you know, they never really did that in the series, or in the movie for that matter. But other than that, it's not much. Now, to compare the two together is tough to begin with, because, you know, again, we are talking about a difference of 22 years for technology. However, I gotta go with the 1995 Megazord, because even though the teeth are real jagged on the bear and the wolf swords, and they're more shiny than I would prefer. And not to mention, the Ninja Megazord has a bucket for a head. But at least, the Zords actually look like their original counterparts from the series. Now, at that time, we weren't introduced to the Ninja Megazord in the series just yet. But it was on the way. And when you watch both the movie and the series, you could see that they do their best to try to make the Zords look something like they did in the series. Not completely, of course, but at least they look like the wolf, the bear, the ape, the frog, the crane, the falcon. Whereas for the 2017 counterpart, it looks something like a T-Rex, looks like a pterodactyl, looks pretty close to a saber-toothed tiger, looks something like a triceratops, and looks like a big bug with tusks. The key point is, they don't really look like they should. And, you know, it was a real disappointment to everyone, including myself, because before the 2017 film came out, they showed us some artist designs as to what these Zords might look like. And we were blown away by them, because these are absolutely incredible. They are true to their original counterparts, but yet they got a more upgraded look. Why the hell didn't they do this? Why did they have to have a mutant Triceratops and a mutant bug with tusks and a T-Rex with machine gun arms. If they had gone with this look, we would have loved it. And I could say that for everybody. We would have loved that look. And as far as I know, there's been no real artist rendition of what the Megazord could have looked like at the time. But I've seen plenty of cool ideas out there, which definitely fit the profile. And, you know, I'm sorry. It's one thing to not necessarily look like your original counterpart 100%, but when you make him look completely different, that is completely unforgivable. So for me, the 1995 Megazord wins, without a doubt, because at least they look like their television counterparts. Now, if you think I'm done with this, no, because there's one more subject I must cover, and that would be the big issue of the CGI of back then versus now. This is where I draw the line big time. Because, you know, a lot of people look at the 1995 film and they go, mm, on the CG. And they look at the 2017 film and they go, oh, that's pretty cool. A really good CG. Well, that's where things are completely unfair. Because you're talking about the type of CG that we had back in 1995. It was very expensive to do. It took hours of work to put together and to render it all. That took hours, maybe even a few days, depending on what you're going for, to pull it off. And that's the truth. Compared to nowadays where, you know, you can uh, get that together in uh, a fairly good time, depending. I mean, it depends how talented you are. And either way, the software has gotten so much better that, you know, you could go for a high quality look without having to spend well, too much money. Well, to a point. And you can render it in a short amount of time. And what everyone forgets is that if you wanted to get the kind of CGI quality like Jurassic Park had back in 1993, again, you had to have a high budget and the best technology available 
And, you know, to do that, the key thing is a high budget. And Fox used its budget on several aspects of the movie. And Saban, even though he wasn't exactly the driving force in this, he was still a part of it. And Saban is notoriously cheap, so they did what they could with what they had. And it worked. Now, I will not deny that the CG on this is slightly better, but that's because of the technology. And, you know, everyone always forgets that. And either way, they didn't do a very good job of making it look too much better than the first movie. And that's the truth. So if you ever try to watch both films, take a good look at the Megazords and try to think back as to what the technology was at the time and what they had to do to pull it off. Now, it is a safe bet that the 2017 film does have the better CG because the software was greatly improved. But to say that that is the answer to everything and to say that that's the reason why this Zord is better, no. And I think everybody agrees on that, too. Granted, there may be some who think a little less of the 1995 Megazord compared to that, but still, we all know that technology only gets you so far. The key thing is to be true to what you're trying to be. And this movie, and especially this Megazord, was definitely not true to what it was supposed to be. You can't judge them by their CG. You can't. Because, I'm sorry, again, difference in technology, difference in time. And it's not the technology that pulls it off. It's how you use it. And everybody's forgotten that. Let me know what you guys think. This is Movie Fan, signing off.